I spent the last seven hours coding in the Vision Pro. I'll be honest, I'm impressed, but there is still a long way for this device to go. Before we go any further, I wanna drop some quick qualifications. I'm Theo, I've been coding for 15 years and I've been running this YouTube channel for about two now. I've been a nerd about VR stuff for well over 10 years. It's just a thing I've always been passionate about. I've owned all of the following headsets. It's a lot of them. Yes, even the Quest Pro, which I hated so much I returned it after about a week. The Vision Pro is a very different device from everything I've listed here. It's an incredible one. The screen's insanely good. I can read text for hours without any issues. Colors pop. The pass-through is just very impressive. I've never had a headset I was this comfortable just like wearing. Yeah, it destroyed my hair, which don't talk about it. The reason it destroyed my hair though is this different headband, which you might notice is different from the ones you're seeing in all the ads because for obvious reasons, Apple doesn't want this giant thing on top of your head in the ads. Well, the reason I'm using that is this solo knit band it comes with looks great. It's absolutely terrible and you should not use this at all. It's as cool as the, the no, and it, it puts all the weight on your face and everyone complaining about the weight is using this band. I guarantee you if they switch to that one, they're gonna be happy with it. The other important thing this came with is its processor. I've managed to stuff an M2 in here and you can tell because there's two giant fan grills on the top. I'll be honest though, at the resolution it runs at, it's just barely enough. This thing's a beast, it needs all the power it can get. It has two huge fan grills on the top just to keep that processor cool. Before I forget, this video is entirely focused on my experience writing code on the Vision Pro. If you want my more general thoughts, you should check out my unboxing video on my second channel, where you can also watch me create this abomination. Before we dive in, just, just one more thing. See this? It's called a MacBook. If you do not own one of these, if you do not use one of these regularly, do not buy one of these. I wanna be very, very clear. If you do not own one of these, you should not buy one of these. Without a MacBook, Vision Pro is a toy, and it's not even a very good one because there are no good games on it. The Quest 3 is a much, much better purchase if you want to experience the best software in VR. There are so many incredible games and experiences you can have on that headset. And honestly, for the price, it's a really good bet. This thing is seven times more expensive, and it is worse for all of the types of things you associate with VR right now. But again, this is a very different device. I could never have imagined coding on my Quest 3. It just, no, the text would not look good. The screens are actually tilted diagonally, so they have a little more resolution, but it means that like vertical lines are slightly jagged and you, you feel like you're in a headset. This is very different. I'll show you guys what I mean. You'll notice here, none of these apps are particularly useful as a developer because we're not gonna be using those. We're actually gonna look here. And usually you'll see this little thing that says connect come up. It's not the most consistent thing. I'll be honest, I've had a lot of times where they didn't appear, but it is right now. So we're gonna look at it and pinch our fingers together, which is how all of the UI tends to work in the headset. Yes, that includes typing. You can kind of pack type. I'll pin a video quick of me trying to do that. It was not, not a great time and I, I cannot recommend it. <laughs> Just, you don't wanna use the keyboard in this, especially for coding. You can tell this is my MacBook. It's not including any of the things that would be just from the headset, it's my Mac. So if I wanna run this project that I have here, typical create T3 app, got some HTML in here in a React server component, getting some data from a database, not using it, that's fine. I can PNPM, okay, I'm using bun for this, so I can bun dev, but you can go to localhost 2000. Oh, look at that, I already have it open. And we see the page, hello, Vision Pro. Really cool, we've all seen this. What if I wanted another window? Well, I'll show you what that looks like first, and then I'll show you how I get there. Okay, so this is really cool, right? I have my browser here, I have my editor here, I can make a change like, don't forget to subscribe, save, and it appears there basically immediately. This is dope. This is awesome. But you might've noticed my IP address right there. That's not localhost. That's the IP address of my laptop on my local network. The reason for that is because this isn't part of my MacBook's environment. This is where the pain starts. I can make my laptop into this awesome bigger display. And this is really cool, especially like on the couch where I tend to code, but it's much less cool when I want to sit at a desk and have multiple 
things going on. There's no way to take a window out of this and put it somewhere else. This isn't a lack of multi-monitor, which yeah, it doesn't have, but I don't want multiple displays. I don't wanna have like six virtual monitors and drag things around. In fact, the way this works right now with the keyboard and trackpad is dope. When I look over here, my trackpad from my laptop works as an input device here. I can go to a new tab and go to youtube.com slash t3.gg. And if I wasn't subscribed to myself, I'd be able to because it's just this keyboard and trackpad controlling whatever I'm looking at. It is really nice to the point where I don't really like using the headset without a MacBook on my lap because it lets me control it without having to use like this mess. This is, the yeah, no. We want to avoid that and we do that using this. And it honestly feels like weirdly thought out for this use case. Like I, I've had a really good experience in here. I've even done a bunch of code reviews and the extra width has given me enough space that I was able to move out of the inline view in GitHub for code reviews and do split view again, which on my laptop felt a little much, especially with those longer Tailwind classes. Yeah, make fun of me in the comments, I know. It was nice. This is good. And it shows once you combine it with this, just how close we are to an incredible developer experience don't think we're there just yet. That's not to say there aren't massive benefits. Again, like when you open this, it's the perfect height. So I'm no longer slumping down looking at my MacBook display. I'm actually looking straight ahead. It's able to scale to whatever size I want. I just grab that corner. I can make it giant display and I can push it real far back. And these types of options are super, super cool. So here's an iOS app I'm working on with Expo. If I change the text here and I'm saving right now, it changes basically immediately. Like this developer experience is incredible, but I can't full screen my text editor because then I'm covering the preview here. And again, in this like 3D world where everything's so tangible and movable, not being able to just grab this preview and pull it out and give it its own space feels so wrong. This is kind of why I'm so excited though, because as annoying as these little pieces are, and as I look around closing all the things I'm not using at this moment, it is so, so close. And I think these little parts are things that will get figured out because so many of them have obvious solutions. Like as soon as we can break windows out of our little Max box and all over and share things the same way I'm sharing my keyboard and trackpad, we're in, that's it. It's, it's this close. So should you buy this thing right now for coding? No, absolutely not. It's still so, so early. We have no idea how this is gonna work out. Like, I'm not too fatigued after using it all day. I'm actually reading off my teleprompter right now through the display and it's fine. Also, the text when I'm reading things in my editor, all great. This is the first time I've used a headset and actually kind of enjoyed coding in it. That said, I think we're a few software updates and integrations away from this being an ideal coding device. Once we're there, I can't imagine anything better. Like it is, it's so close to groundbreaking. The glimpses of something incredible are all over this device. I am actually so excited for when we get to the point where not only is it a good developer experience, it's the best one. If you have 35 to $4,000 burning a hole in your back pocket and you're very curious what this looks like, maybe it's worth a shot. I'm very excited to play with video editing more though. Okay, so quick interruption. I've been editing this video for about 30 minutes now and it is, it is awesome. The one catch is there's no way to pass your MacBook's audio to the headset. So I have to plug in my wired headphones to my MacBook. Say hi, Murphy. Anyways, we're not talking about graphics. We're talking about code. And as close as this is, I still think you should just buy a monitor but I'll be sure to let you guys know if and when that changes because I like this thing enough that I'll personally be keeping it. Thanks for helping me with the tax write-off, boys. Till I see you next time. Peace, nerds.